Greetings, knowledge seekers. The Force is with you. Recently, a DJ from Chicago named DJ Damien asked me, how do we know it's the right time to finally update our Mac? I replied to him three individual approaches in determining what would constitute as the right time. I thought it would be valuable to share it with you. So in this video, I'm going to show you three options in determining when it is the right time for DJs to update your Mac operating system. But first, let's grab some music from our sponsor, Direct Music Service. DMS is an online database where DJs can get their music from. There's thousands of unique edits, remixes, and originals that you can choose from of your favorite tracks that you can use to rock your next dance floor. They also have an app that you can use on your mobile device where you can browse their database and then save songs so that it appears on your Dropbox when you get home. I'm gonna leave you two discount links down below in the pinned comment if you want to subscribe. Go to directmusicservice.com today to sign up. Now keep in mind, the following three options are just guidelines to help you decide. However, ultimately, the decision is always based on what works for you and your individual preferences. And also very, very important, before you update, always make sure to back up your machine using Time Machine so you have a way to revert back to your previous state in case you decide this isn't going to work. If you want a video about why DJs with MacBooks should use Time Machine, leave a comment in the comment section below. Option number one, I wanna update as soon as possible. These are the folks who cannot wait to try out the new latest and greatest operating system. If you're one of these folks, here's what you wanna do. Hold off on updating until the developers of your software and your hardware each release the compatible software and drivers, and in some cases firmware, that is compatible or have been tested for the Mac OS version you are desiring to update to. If you're a DJ who uses, say, the DDJ Rev 7, that means Serato has to announce a compatible version and Pioneer DJ has to release a compatible driver or simply certify the current one works. And once again, in some cases, but not as often, this can apply to firmware as well. One of the big confusions that happened when Big Sur first came out was that the hardware companies released drivers and firmware at a different time from the software companies. This led to DJs updating their Macs prematurely and discover that their DJ gear and or software wasn't ready yet to run on the operating system. So always check software company like Serato and hardware company like Pioneer DJ both have to announce compatibility. And that even applies to companies that have their own software and hardware, for example, Rekordbox and Pioneer DJ. If you're only using your Mac for DJing, this is pretty much it. But if you multitask with your Mac like a lot of people do, usually some people only have one machine to do everything with, like producing or using creative software, you also have to take into account updates for software, drivers, and firmware for everything else you use. This includes your DAW, your controllers, and your audio interface. Now keep in mind, even if you do the right thing and wait for your software and hardware companies to come out with the updates that are compatible, it's no guarantee the operating system will work perfectly, especially if the operating system is a major update. There may be issues you will come across that are unforeseen or haven't been resolved yet. Option number one applies to two people, folks who are willing to take the risk and have enough experience to resolve issues by themselves, as well as folks who are buying a new computer. Many DJs couldn't use their brand new machine for several months as they waited for updates from the DJ software companies and hardware companies. So make sure to research and proceed at your own risk. Option number two, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, secured. In this option, simply keep your Mac OS on the oldest Apple supported operating system. At the time this video is being produced, that would be Catalina. Catalina is two versions older than the current Monterey operating system with Big Sur in between them. While this could vary depending on the developer, generally the oldest supported operating system by Apple is the oldest officially supported operating system on the software system requirements. For Serato, this is the case. Check with your DJ software to see what the system requirements say about your operating system. By having an operating system that is still supported by Apple, you are still protected with security updates that protect your machine from vulnerabilities. Also, by having an operating system that has been around for a while, many of the issues have been worked out. 
The software and hardware updates are well established and there are many folks who have already used it and can help you out with their experiences. Option number two is what I would recommend for most people and is generally the least problematic and is the most supported in terms of software, driver, and firmware. Do keep in mind, if you have a young MacBook that you bought pretty recently, you can only use the Mac OS version no older than the one your computer came with. So if you bought an M1 Mac that came with Big Sur, there's no going to Catalina. Now, conversely, if you have a really old MacBook, say a MacBook Pro 2010, there may be a limit how far you can update your operating system. If your machine has reached this point and you're using new gear, it's time to get a new laptop. Whether you're a Mac or Windows type of user, everybody has preferences. A recent poll I posted showed that folks with Macs are likely to make it last for six to 10 years, while most folks with Windows PCs will only last an average of three to six years. Now I know individual experiences might vary, I get it. There are folks who are using 10 year old Windows laptops, but it's very common for me to hear from the folks running a 2011 or 2012 MacBook Pro running Serato DJ Pro with fairly new gear. And you'll be surprised how many of these nine to 10 year old MacBook Pros are still kicking and running. I still see that little optical disc slot out in the wild. <laughs> Lastly, option number three, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, unsecure. For testing reasons, I kept my oldest MacBook Pro on High Sierra, which is two versions older than Catalina. Catalina being the oldest security supported operating system from Apple. Despite Serato system requirements and Pioneer DJ drivers listing Catalina as the oldest supported operating system. It was the case that for a while, the software, driver, and firmware updates worked with High Sierra. At the time of this video, this is the case with the DDJ Rev7 and a few other devices. Every time you saw me running the Rev7 on my YouTube channel, I was running High Sierra. You might ask, why don't they just list High Sierra as supported then? Well, that's because High Sierra is no longer an Apple supported OS and is posing a security risk to your machine. If you have a machine in this state, it would be wise that you don't keep it connected to the internet very long. And also keep as much of your private information away from this machine. While you can't avoid everything, photos, videos, credit card information, just keep that machine strictly for your DJing use only. Option three is basically for folks who's absolutely fearful of updating, but still happen to be compatible with their current software, their DJ software specifically. As time goes on, you will slowly start seeing updates that are no longer compatible. Recently, this was the case with the XDJ RX3 driver that had Serato compatibility. While Serato still worked on High Sierra, the driver needed to run the XDJ RX3 required Catalina. That's when I decided it was time to bring that MacBook Pro up to Catalina. And it also means I had to say goodbye to my dedicated NVIDIA GPU since it sees support after High Sierra. Now, some of you might ask, why isn't there a fourth option where you just don't update at all? Commonly, these are the folks who are often the ones running operating systems older than High Sierra and might be using DJ hardware that is no longer supported while running Serato Scratch Live, which was discontinued in 2014, eight years ago from this video. And if you think these are just really, really few people in this camp, I know a couple touring open format DJs still in this camp. In fact, I've seen recent photos from clubs in Vegas where the DJ was still using Serato Scratch Live. These are the super, super diehard, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, folks. My best understanding is the fear comes from a variety of things. They either had a bad experience during an update and decided, I'm never doing this again, or they simply don't like the changes to their workflow because they had to use new software. Now, I'm not trying to knock on these folks, but there is an issue here. Your situation is a ticking time bomb. Eventually, they might come across a security threat that could destroy their Mac or compromise their data. Or, more often than not, they will be forced to update their operating system whenever they get new gear. Instead of deciding when to update their gear, they are waiting for their gear to decide for them. I knew someone who was running on Mavericks, which is older than Catalina, for a long time. Then they purchased a relatively recent DJ controller. Well, on Mavericks, it didn't work. And you know how when you update your Mac, it doesn't give you the options of all the operating systems in between. It only shoots you to the most recent one. 
Well, when they clicked update, it updated all the way to the not yet supported Big Sur without backing up their computer on Time Machine. Needless to say, at the time, their laptop was practically useless for two months, unless he decides to clear all his data and start over with that machine. I'll leave you guys a link down below on how to update your machine to an operating system that's not the most recent one. Needless to say, it's a good idea to do your research and have a balance, keyword balance, between being up to date and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you're itching to update too fast, you will run into problems. If you are stuck, never updating, you will run into problems. Option number two is probably the most recommendable one. You update when Apple stops supporting your OS because your software and hardware may soon follow. You'll always be within the threshold of support from developers. If you're an experienced user, option number one and three are the farthest you should go. But if you're on the extreme end of needing to update as soon as possible, and I refuse to update ever, you'll always experience the same problem. The gear simply won't work. Hope you guys found this video useful. Really appreciate you for watching. The Force is with you always.